welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. <clears throat> In today's lecture we're going to talk about the Bohr model for the structure of the atom. Okay, so before we get into the details of the Bohr model, we should discuss about a little bit about uh, some observations uh, which had been made at the time that Bohr formulated this, this model and, and in some sense which motivated um, this model. Um, so, uh, people, uh, we, we've discussed how uh, a thermal uh, source, that is a sort of something like a hot filament or a black body, emits a, um, a broad, continuous um, s spectrum, that is the, the, uh, the wavelength varies continuously, um, the emitted wavelength varies continuously uh, from such a spectrum, and we've talked about the Planck um, uh, distribution, uh, spectral distribution, uh, several, lectures, several lectures ago, which describes the black body and so forth. The point is that um, the thermal um, sources have a continuous um, spectrum and the wavelengths that are emitted from such sources can, can vary from something very sm small, which corresponds to high energy, to something very long, which corresponds to, to low energy. Um, and so if you used a prism, for example, to split out the different, um, to, to take a, if you sh uh, took a thermal source, the, the light emitted from a thermal source, and you put it through a prism and, and separated the colors, again, you'd see sort of a continuous distribution, a, a rainbow of colors, and that, those, those colors would actually extend beyond the visible range uh, into the low, short wavelengths, the UV, and the long wavelengths, infrared. Um, now, if you do this, a similar uh, sort of experiment with a gas, uh, an elemental gas, a gas of hydrogen, neon, xenon, um, etc., um, sodium, then what you'll find is that, that uh, if you excite that gas somehow via, for example, an electric discharge, you'll find that the emission, uh, the, the wavelengths, the light, the colors that are emitted are come into uh, at very dis uh, uh, discrete wavelengths, okay? So this, there are some spectral emission lines um, which appear, and uh, for example, I've shown um, some here, uh, these, this is from an elect uh, I mean a spectroscope showing um, the, this is like a prism or a grating showing the, the separation of the different emission lines, the visible emission lines from hydrogen gas, and also if you took a white light source, that is a, a source uh, that has uh, all different wavelengths or uh, continuous distribution of wavelengths over a broad range, for example, a thermal source, and then you pass that through an elemental gas, then what you'll see is that at certain, that the same discrete wavelengths, um, or at least, uh, yeah, uh, there's a correspondence between uh, dark bands that appear in this continuous dis uh, spectrum, um, which cor again correspond to the emission um, lines uh, when you when you excite the gas and look at the emission, okay? So there are there are discrete emission and absorption lines which appear from these elemental um, gases, okay? Um, in in the late 1800s, uh, people started to look at this carefully, and Johannes Balmer from Switzerland, and my understanding is that he was actually um, a, a school teacher in Switzerland. He was able to sort of make a phenomenological model that is uh, a, a description, mathematical description of the position, the spectral positions of these um, emission and absorption uh, lines in, uh, in hydrogen. And what he found was that their wavelength is equal to some um, constant, uh, 364.5 um, nanometers, times the ratio of n squared over n squared minus 4, where n is just an integer that goes from, th uh, that, that is at least 3, okay? And, um, and so each, each one of these lines, so uh, as, as n gets bigger, okay, then the wavelength um, gets uh, shorter, and so, uh, and you can see that it starts to, that they start getting closer and closer together, and they start to converge to a wavelength equal to 364.5 nanometers. So, 